previously on the Dice Girls. I'm about to give you some pretty sensitive information. I think I need to know a little more about your motives first. You seem to be implying that there's some kind of connection between this Wolfric and my father. I assumed you would have known that since you came in here asking about both of them. All we know is that we gotta stop something. We don't have the whole story, and we're trying to figure that out. I have a friend next door, James. He discovered that someone had placed a mimic in his basement, and he asked me to get rid of it, and I just haven't had a chance yet. <laughs> Would you be willing to, to help me out? Yes. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can do that. Yeah. The chest in the corner suddenly starts skittering towards you, and now we're going to roll for oh, initiative. Oh, God. With sugar and spice and a roll of the dice, you're listening to The Dice Girls. Let's see what I'm adding to a one. <laughs> you um, rolled a one. A one. <laughs> yeah, so that'd be a two. Um, nine. Uh, the mimic comes skittering towards you, and um, we said Rachna went into the basement first, so you're probably closest. Yeah. You're probably its first its first target. It's kind of a small chest, <laughs> and it's just like skittering towards you like a giant chest-shaped bug. <laughs> As it gets closer to you, it's going to attempt to bite you. Okay. So it comes up and it's like slobbering and like, blah, I'm making terrible noises. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. Uh, and yeah, it tries to bite your leg. It's, uh... <laughs> it does a great job. It does a great job Uh-oh. with a nat 20. <gasps> oh, Rachna. Yeah. Um, so it hits you, for sure. It bites you. It hurts. <laughs> Ow. You're going to take 12 piercing damage. Oh, no. And you're going to take 10 acid damage. <gasps> okay. So... That's a lot of damage. That's 22, right? Yep. I have 1 HP. Oh! Well, I have the ability, if I go down to 0, I can still... I can drop to 1 instead. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> it bites you real good. It's terrifying and it hurts and stings a lot because it has acid in its teeth ah! <laughs> Rachna, it is it's your turn cool i'm gonna get my axe out and start trying to hack it off of me <laughs> eight but you add your proficiency bonus and your strength modifier so plus five so 13 total. you hit it yay <laughs> all right so that's five damage and then five plus your strength bonus Oh, eight. And uh, Divine Smite, additional radiant damage, equal to 2d8. So what is, you, Rachna is casting Divine Smite. Yes. What does it look like? My axe gets a super cool, like, yellow, like, bright light, um, like an aura to it that looks all holy and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, it's, it's like gold and silver. So the gold is like a very holy looking color, right? <laughs> and it's silver cause Bahamut. Nice. <laughs> so. Nice. It's just super cool. Sweet. Very sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So eight. So you swing at this mimic with your holy awesome looking axe and you definitely hit it. You definitely do a good chunk of damage to it. And your axe sticks to it. Let's go. I got another, guys. <laughs> I'm going to let go of my axe, and do I have enough action to, like, grab my next axe? Yeah. Okay, I grab my next axe, and I take a defensive position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now it's Kai's turn. When the axe gets oh. stuck to it, it kind of starts, like, shaking, like it's trying to shake the axe off, <laughs> like a cat <laughs> with something stuck to it, and it's just still making the, like, <laughs> little noise. <laughs> I'm going to use another dagger and stab it. <laughs> yes. 19. <laughs> Seven. You stab this little guy and mm-hmm. your dagger sticks to it and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite sound to make today. And uh, yeah, he 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 looks injured. 
<laughs> and now it's Trigus' turn. Before I go, I want to give her, give Rockna Bardic Inspiration. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What does that look like? It's... What do you do <laughs> you to inspire oh, her? I look at Rockna and I say, Rockna, you are my friend. You are strong. You are a warrior. <laughs> And then as I'm saying the words, this purple, like, mist comes floating out of my mouth, and then it surrounds her in a, like, a mist cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yeah. And Rockman, you suddenly feel inspired. I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I would like to cast Cloud of Daggers. Tell us what it looks like when you cast Cloud of Daggers. I scrunch up my face and I yell at the treasure chest, Hey, you, get off of my cloud. And then I do like lightning fingers at it and this cloud forms with daggers. (laughs) That sounds amazing. I'm just going to stick my tongue out at it. (laughs) Okay. I like that. You stick your tongue out at the Mimic and have cast this Cloud of Daggers, and now it's the Mimic's turn, so now it's starting its turn in the Cloud of Daggers. It's going to take damage. Okay. What damage does it take? Eight damage. Eight damage. The Mimic starts its turn in this Cloud of Daggers, and you see a bunch of the daggers just kind of like poking at it and stabbing it. As they stab the Mimic, it... They stick to the mimic, and so now it's just got a bunch of daggers like sticking out of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and Rockna's axe, and uh, also Kai's two daggers. Yeah, so it just looks like a scary pincushion. <laughs> it does look a little like a pincushion. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> and it's slobbering and growling and <laughs> yeah, uh, and it is the mimic's turn. You see like a a, a pseudopod like arm. Oh no, kind of like. Slash out, fl- like, towards Trigus, um, and it's going to try to attack you with its pseudopod. Its little pseudopod, like, slashes out at you, and it sticks onto your leg. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to take ten damage. <gasps> oh, help me. Oh, you got, you're good. You're going to, yeah, you take ten damage, and now this thing is, his little arm is stuck to your leg. And it's Rockman's turn. Yeah, I think I'm too stubborn to, like, stop and heal myself. I'm just going to swing at it again. Okay. Um, With my second battle hacks. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Who would have thought? Bardic. Okay, so a total of nine. But I'm going to use my bardic inspiration. <laughs> Plus six. Fifteen. You definitely hit oh. it. Yay! Good job with the bardic inspiration. <laughs> Thank you, right? You would not have hit it otherwise. And so I do 1d8. And I'm going to use another, sp- yeah, I'm going to use another spell slot and use Divine Smite again, too. <laughs> your other axe sticks to the mimic. It does the holy thing again mm-hmm. with your where it's, it's glowing and, and sparkling. And sparkling, and it looks awesome. And the mimic says, <laughs> when it says that it's weaker, it looks like it's not doing great at all. And it's Kai's turn. Well, I take another dagger. <laughs> I take a defensive stance. <laughs> <laughs> Take another dagger and try and get it. 16! Plus. Ooh, you definitely hit it. Ooh. Okay, damage. Uh, so five. The mimic is gonna die. Yeah! Woo! What does it look like? I just stab it. <laughs> no, like I stab it and then it goes. <laughs> <laughs> when you stab it and it dies, it kind of it stops looking like a chest and it kind of like transforms into this like shapeless kind of blob and all of the daggers and weapons that were stuck to it clatter to the ground. <laughs> so yeah, there is the shapeless blob and all of these weapons clattered on the floor. I take my three daggers that I lost. <laughs> um yeah, I'll I'll pick up my axes and put them back on my back and then I'm going to grab my leg where he bit me. And I'm going to use my lay on hands to restore 15 hit points, which is my entire pool. Okay. I should probably do take my potion of healing. Okay. You regain eight. Well, that sucked. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully now we can get some information. (laughs) Let's get out of here. I brush off Min Min just to make sure he's fine. (laughs) He's good. He didn't get stuck to anything. Okay, cool. Hey, let's go talk to Jock and tell him we... (laughs) <laughs> what was his real name? James. 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 Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's a swing, huh? <laughs> um, 
Uh, yeah, so uh, we go back upstairs, and I uh, I say to James, it's gone. We took care of it now. There is uh-huh. a squishy body on the floor, though. <laughs> I, yeah, I figured there. I figured there would be a body left behind. Thank you for taking care of it for me. Can I pay you for your troubles? Yes. Trig is holding out his hand. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take three. He gives you each two gold. Yay! Oh. Arachna doesn't accept it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Like I said, I I think I was the target of of a prank. I. I'm not, I'm not sure who by, a, a couple of my friends have had similar things happen. Uh, one of my friends had a whole, a whole cage of sprites released in his, in his barber shop and down at the vet's house. They got egged the other night and she wasn't too happy about it. I would, it's just annoying. I'd give anything to find out who is doing this and we'll find out. Yeah. Do you know why you might be targeted? I have a suspicion. A couple of my friends and I, well, we believe that asylum should have some sort of government, some sort of some sort of way to to be able to make decisions in an official manner. It it can get a little messy with no official real government here. My friends who have been attacked feel the same way. We've we've been we've been trying to to convince the townspeople of asylum to form a government and some people are more resistant than others, and I I wonder if that might have something to do with it, unfortunately. Uh, could you tell us who else was attacked? Maybe maybe we can help all of you out. That that would be incredible. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, my, my friend over uh, Vince is the barber in town here, and, and he, like I said, he that was a mess that day. There was a whole cage of, of sprites that were released in his barber shop, and those little buggers wreak havoc. Uh, it took him all afternoon. He had to close down shop. Took him all afternoon to round them all up, and uh, he actually missed one. So the next day was not too great either for him. Um, and then over at the vet's office, Rosemary had she got egged, and she was she was quite upset by it. It it frightened the animals that she was housing the the noise and the the big mess, and it just wasn't pleasant for her. No one wants to be egged. That's awful. How how long has this been going on? It's been a it's been a couple weeks now. We're trying to watch out for each other. We we think maybe the apothecary might be next. Our Megzi over there, she uh she also agrees that asylum should have a government. She hasn't been she hasn't been the victim of a of a prank yet, but we're wondering if she's not going to be next. Is there anyone else you think might also be on the list of targets for this person? I think the four of us are probably the most vocal. I don't know who might be next. We're, I mean, like I said, the the four of us are the most vocal about wanting a government here in asylum. Nobody else that I can think of is really as is really as opinionated about it as we are. All right. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can find this guy and help you guys out. That would be that would be amazing. We would we would appreciate it so much if we could. Just, there's no need for it. You don't have to agree with us, but there's no need to vandalize our property over it. We'll probably be doing some spying. So you may see us, like, sneaking around hunched over. Just, just go with it. He snickers and says, well, if I see you sneaking around hunched over, you're not too great at sneaking around, are ya? (laughs) I just have one more question. Sure. Well, what do you know about... If you don't mind me asking, what do you know about Hayoni? Well, she's she's been my shop neighbor here for as long as I've been here. She was here before I even was. She's always been very friendly. She's, you know, as you know, she's the one I asked to help me out with the mimic in my basement. And, and she's she's just been a good neighbor. We haven't, uh, I don't know her very well, but I have no complaints about her. Does she have secret tunnel? A secret? Um, no, I think what he means to ask is, do, do you know if... Uh, if she shares your beliefs about a government for asylum, I haven't really asked her about it. I don't. I don't know. Now that I'm now that I've had this mimic in my basement, I've been a little more hesitant to talk about it. Understandable. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks for your time, James. Thank you for for everything. If you are able to stop these people, that would be amazing. I I would be very very pleased, and as would my friends. We'll do what we can. Thank you. And we leave. <laughs> we back away awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> we better go to the question store first. Yeah, let's go back and see Hayoni. Tell her we did the thing. Yeah, I'm I'm ready for this conversation, whatever it is. Hi everybody, I'm Andrew Johnson, Dungeon Master of the Quest Company. 
a Dungeons & Dragons live play podcast. Join me as I take an assassin. Oh, I kill things. An ex-pirate. I'm not paying extra for debauchery. A skeletal necromancer. Have I finally reached hell? And a very confused cleric. I see dead bodies all the time, and now my eyeballs bleed. On the adventure of a lifetime. You can also join us on side quests where we bring in guests and try new games like Monster of the Week, Uncharted Worlds, Tiny Dungeon, and more. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. We release new episodes every week, and you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at The Quest Company. Thanks for listening. Hey, Dicelings, it's Becca, your Dice Girls DM, trying to be a little bit quiet because it's like 7.30 in the morning and I'm the only one in my house who's awake. So, sorry if I sound a little different. I'm going to make this quick. We have a new patron that we want to shout out on our Patreon page. Anthony, welcome, welcome to our family and thank you so, so much for becoming a patron. Thank you to everyone who's tweeting about the show using the hashtag the Dice Girls. It super, super helps us get the word out there and to get more people listening to our podcast. We heard a brief mention of three new NPCs that are going to be coming up in the next couple of episodes uh, that are all named after folks on Twitter. Uh, Vince is from at D&D Grandma. Uh, Megzy is at Megzy Sass Pants. And and then, of course, Rosemary uh, is at Ready St. Rosemary. So those are all wonderful Twitter people who have tweeted about us using that hashtag, the Dice Girls. If you do that, you might also be featured as an NPC on the show. We want to say a huge thank you to Critical Bits who had us on their special Spider Day episode. It's a massive, amazing episode. Uh, they also invited me to DM one of the games on their charity stream this weekend, and it went amazingly. You all are super fantastic. They raised over $2,000 for Covenant House in Georgia to help out homeless youth, and it's just incredible. So thank you to them for involving us with that project, and thank you to all of you for donating to that project. It's just fantastic all around. We also want to say a big thank you to Cassie from Lovely Craftians. Yesterday, we all played our first session of Call of Cthulhu with Cassie. We had a great time. Uh, and keep an eye out on their Twitter, their uh, social media, because that episode, I think she said it's going to come out sometime in mid-May for their kind of birthday celebration. We had a lot of fun. Just a super quick reminder that eel mail is totally a thing. If you want to send a message, to friend, family member, anyone you'd like uh, to have one of us read it uh, during this portion of the show, you can totally do that thing. It's on our website, thedicegirlspodcast.com, and it's under the Support Us menu. Thank you again to all of you for being so incredibly amazing. We super appreciate you, and now we're going to get back to the show. Head back into Hayoni's shop. The little bell tinkles um, as you go in, and you don't see her in there f- at first, but you do see Celeste, who you remember was traveling with Garrison and Voodoo. Uh, she was one of the three of the party members who was impersonating you. Um, Celeste is in the candle store, and she seems to be waiting, um, and she's kind of like tapping her fingers on the uh, counter a little impatiently. She looks up at you when you come in, and she looks really sheepish <laughs> at you. She she looks embarrassed and she she says, Hi, I, I'm glad you all made it to, to Asylum safely. Hello, liar. <laughs> <laughs> she turns so red. Her whole face turns red and uh, she frowns and, and kind of like ashamedly nods. Yeah, I probably deserve that. How how are you finding asylum so far? Confusing. <laughs> it's uh it's an interesting place to be sure. That it is. What did they tell you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> When you came here to the question store before, they told you something. She looks around the store, like, <laughs> the question store? 
<laughs> here. We saw you and your traveling companions come in here, and then you disappeared when we came in behind you. The secret tunnel. She again turns red. She looks pretty uh embarrassed. Like she's she's a little shy. Um yeah, we uh Hione was was helping us out. Um speaking of Hione, have you have you seen her? I I I'm looking for Garrison. I haven't Voodoo and I haven't seen him since we got here. Oh. We came into the shop. You saw us come into the shop, and uh, Hayoni. I I don't know how much you know about our actual story now. Voodoo and I were escorting Garrison here. We were protecting him, and uh, we came to Hayoni for help with Garrison. Hayoni said that she needed to to speak with him alone, and uh, Voodoo and I left. And we haven't seen we haven't seen Garrison since. We're a little worried about him. Have you seen him or Hayoni? We saw Hayoni earlier today, but then we went somewhere, and now we're back, and she's not here. <laughs> I'm going to look in the back. Have you looked uh, in the back? It's kind of trespassy, Trigus. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Let's ask the snake. Is the snake still there? Can Trigus talk to snakes? <laughs> yes. The snake is still there. Oh, no. I can only talk to creatures underwater. Is it a water snake? It is not a water snake. Is it a neel? <laughs> it's not a neel. <laughs> I think I should go look in the back. Hello? <laughs> Hi, Oni? She's not here. I'm going to go look in the back. See if there's a secret tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, no, I mean, we were just here... You know, a few minutes ago. Um, I don't know, 20 minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, I probably didn't take it too long to dispatch up the... But yeah. you did stop and talk to James a little. Okay, yeah. 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah, okay, yeah, we were we were here, you know, only like 15 or 20 minutes ago. That's when we last saw her. Nothing seemed off or anything. Maybe she just stepped out for a quick lunch or a break or something. Hopefully she comes back. So you haven't seen Garrison at all? No, mm-hmm. sorry. Well, if you do, will you... You know, let him know we're looking for him. Voodoo and I both were very worried about him. We were with him to protect him, and we can't protect him if we don't know where he is. Yes, of course. We'll help you. Thank you. We appreciate it a lot. And she looks a little uncomfortable and kind of awkwardly leaves the store. (laughs) She slowly backs out. (laughs) She slowly backs out. Man, she's got us down to a T. <laughs> She's got your mannerisms and everything. <laughs> That's how they got away with impersonating us. <laughs> they just slowly backed out of every conversation. <laughs> well, yeah, I heard this about these guys. <laughs> They're weird. <laughs> okay, is there like a bell on the counter or anything? There's not. And I've already yelled, and there's no response. I feel like Trius is like two seconds away from vaulting over the I'm counter. going in. <laughs> I'm going in. I don't even wait. I just... Is there like a partition that folds over or is there a counter? I- so there's actually like um, a back... You see a doorway into like a back room of the shop. Okay. So I'm going into the door. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, it just... It looks like a storage room. Uh, you see lots... It's very cluttered just like the storefront, but mm-hmm. there's more things that are still in boxes. Uh, it, they haven't been prepared to be put on display yet, uh, or there's no room for them. And there is a back door to the shop, and it's open. Oh, I'm going in. <laughs> no, Trigus. <laughs> I'm already moving. <laughs> if she just, no, if she just left, if she, no, if she just stepped out, then she's not going to trust us. Well, you guys stay up front then. <laughs> she's not coming back. How do you know that? <laughs> Tritons have a... <laughs> certain way of knowing things they shouldn't know. It's called FSP. Oh, God. FSP. Fish sensory perception. Is that just about fish, though? Oh, no, it's about the universe. <laughs> Trigus knows the secrets of the universe. Yeah. It's canon. <laughs> I like to think that Trigus is secretly a genius. Yeah. 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 With his minus three intelligence. <laughs> So I go in the door. Oh, God. It uh, leads you outside to kind of like an alleyway. And you look up and down the alley. And you actually do see Hayoni outside. She's kind of just, uh, she's sitting cross-legged on the ground out uh, out in the alley. Hayoni, we, we're worried about you. 
We thought someone might have kidnapped you. Is she there? In the alley, doing meditation. She's not meditating anymore. (laughs) So, okay, I go through the back door, and since I know she's back there, I'm going to put my hand on Triggis' shoulder and say, no, you can't, you can't just barge into somebody, (laughs) the back of somebody's store like this. Very convincingly. (laughs) Roll a deception check. Ah! 10 plus 1, 11. You don't sound very convincing. You sound kind of convincing. But uh, Hyone kind of smiles to herself <laughs> as she hears Rachna. Uh, and she was meditating. She stands up and kind of brushes off her crimson robes. And she smiles at at Trigus and, and she says, it's... it's it's okay. I uh, I just I was just taking a quick break. Sorry, I didn't I didn't think you guys would be able to handle that thing so quickly. To be honest, <laughs> you should probably put up one of those signs. Be back in fifteen minutes. Yes. You're right. Yes. You're right. I'll have to. I'll yeah. have to get my hands on one of those. Yeah, because people will worry about you if you're disappeared. So, were you able to help out my friend James? Killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Fantastic. Why don't we go back inside and we can chat? And I think, yeah, I think I'll give you some information about what I know. And she starts headed towards the door of her shop. And we follow. And so you all all go back into her shop and she sits down in the, there was a chair. Um, She moves some books off of the chair and stacks them on another stack of books. And she sits down in the chair and and she kind of, it's like a, kind of like an armchair. Uh, it looks pretty cozy. She sits in it and, and crosses her legs and kind of looks up at you and sighs. <laughs> do we oh. sit on the ground like it's story time? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> do I, though? <laughs> I'm going to roll for it. <laughs> Even number, I sit down for a story time. <laughs> I rolled a nat 20. I sit down excitedly for the story time. Yeah, you all sit down on the rug that's on the on the floor in her shop. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> and she she looks down at you sitting in front of her and and and, and kind of smirks a little and sighs and says, I want you to give me your word that you're not going to harm Wolfric. We won't harm him. Is he innocent? I believe he is. Yeah, we won't harm him if he's innocent. (laughs) We've heard that before. Yeah. If he's truly innocent, we will not harm him. And how will you decide if he's truly innocent or not? His supposed crime happened a hundred years ago. We would just ask him. That's usually how I kind of (laughs) think so. She smiles. In that case, I believe he's safe. (laughs) (laughs) I'm working with a bunch of dummies here. (laughs) Wolfric, he's a little unusual. You know that, right? It can be inferred from what we've heard. He's, He's a bit eccentric. He, well, to be honest, he's been... Hiding here for many, many years. Oh. <laughs> Is that Trigus or Kim? It's Kim. <laughs> <laughs> he's here? I mean, he's not here in my shop, of course. Very few people in Asylum are privy to the knowledge that Wolfric has been here for a very long time. Can we see him? Heard a lot about the guy. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few questions. Are you innocent? <laughs> Being chief among them. <laughs> yes, I believe at some point you'll be able to meet to meet Wolfric. Maybe not quite today, but he's very private. He's he's I've never even met the man. He doesn't often have visitors, which is why I'm I'm surprised that you don't know this already. I was very surprised. I, I've, as I said, I've not met Wolfric. I've only, I've only met his caretaker, girl. <gasps> oh! <laughs> 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 oh my father is his caretaker. He has been. Since the war. Not many people in Asylum know that either. Most people think Garul died during the war, and Wolfric preferred it that way. In fact, it was Wolfric's previous caretaker who died in the war, and Garul was chosen to replace him. 
and had to go basically into hiding with Wolfric, only venturing into asylum very rarely for supplies to maintain their secrecy. Do you know where we can find him? I have some information that might help you get there. Yes. It's going to be a little bit of a tricky journey. Um, it's not far from here. <laughs> we need our climbers kits. <laughs> <laughs> it's not far from here, but it is, they have taken measures to protect it from, from outsiders. So getting in might be, might be a little tricky. But yes, I believe I can help you find Wolfric and Girl. If you've never met Wolfric, why do you believe he's innocent? There are elders in the town who have met Wolfric, just a few of them. And I trust their judgment very deeply. And they believe he is innocent. For whatever reasons, I have not pried. It's generally not too wise to go prying around about Wolfric. Um, so I've tried not to poke my nose into it too much. But I do trust their judgment. So what do we do? How do we, how do we find them? Well, I have a map that a friend here has drawn for me that shows the general path to getting to the area that Wolfric lives in. Once you're there, you might be careful of traps. And you're still going to have to actually locate the, the the residence. That part is kept strictly. Nobody knows that information. They know the general area that Gruul has been coming and going from, but that's it. So I can point you in the general direction. I can tell you that it will be heavily trapped. And I can tell you that you will have to do a little bit of searching. Unfortunately, that's the best I can do. Well, why did you need a map? I got the map for you. <laughs> I called in a great favor to get this map for you. Oh, we appreciate you. Yes, thank you. Um, can you tell us who drew it? The person who drew the map wishes not to be revealed. Spooky, okay. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, there is much secrecy surrounding Wolfrey. Okay, that's understandable. Should we first try to find your father, or we still need to help fence Rosary and Magazine? <laughs> Okay, this time even I'm lost. <laughs> That's the name of the barber, the oh, the vet, the and the Russian. okay, and the apothecary. Yeah, I was gonna ask Garrison. about if Garrison's good. Oh yeah, <laughs> is Garrison good? Uh, Celeste was looking for him. Oh, I will have to find Celeste uh, and and update her on Garrison's status for sure. Secret. I I believe Garrison probably would not want it divulged. But with his close friend, Celeste, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Voodoo's looking for him, too. Just so he doesn't think that Voodoo doesn't like him or anything. Voodoo does like him. Yoni <laughs> 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 um, kind of chuckles a little and says, I will, I, will, I will let Garrison know his friends are searching for him. Okay, cool. So about this mimic that, that we had to take care of, James also said that it, it was some kind of attack. Or he believes it to be some sort of a place there by somebody purposely. Um, and he seems to think that other people who share his beliefs are being targeted as well. Is Do you know anything about this? Hyoni looks thoughtful for a moment and she says, you know, now that you, now that you mention that, I, I have noticed more mischievous things maybe happening. I, I didn't think to link them though. What beliefs is he, is he speaking on James? I, you won't, we are neighbors and we get along, but we've never really had in-depth conversations. It's a secret. Um, <laughs> he believes that asylum. He and the others who were targeted believe that asylum should have a government. She raises an eyebrow. Interesting. And he believes that he's being attacked because of it. Well, it's the common thread that him and the others share. The others who have been targeted. She looks. She takes a moment to process that information, and she says. I will have to look into that. Thank you. That maybe I can help figure out what's going on. Can I do a perception check? Yeah. So if I'm... You don't notice anything off or unusual about what she's saying? Can she we do insight? Yeah, yeah let's absolutely. Do it. Both of you, go for it. 13. <laughs> uh, Plus your whatever. 9. <laughs> 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you all feel like Hyone is being pretty open with you about... Wanting to fix it or find out what's going on. Uh, do you, I mean, do you share that belief too? Uh, you might be a target. Do you know, this is actually kind of the first I've, he I've heard of this. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I haven't had a chance to think on it yet. I believe there are probably pros and cons. I don't know yet. That's fair. Is there anything we should take with us to go to the secret place? All I know is that it's very likely heavily trapped and it's, Hard to find. I don't know 
of any specific traps or or anything like that. Do you have any magic candles? <laughs> she kind of smiles. Uh, well, all of my candles are lightly touched by magic, but oh. uh, but I don't believe any of them would be helpful in in disarming a trap or finding a oh. secret. We we won't take three. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you three. What what are you hoping to learn from Wolfric? This is out of my own personal curiosity. Well, I mean, like I said before, we we had some friends who were in trouble. They were targeted, and the um, the church that we infiltrated they have a larger motive, as far as we can tell. So, in order for us to stop these attacks, we need to find out what's really going on. So maybe we're hoping at least that Wolfric will know something about the High Priestess and why she was so obsessed with him. Because even though she's dead, she still had people loyal to her, and they might still be trying to... Not to mention that weird red orb thing. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite interesting. I I do hope you're able to get information. I'm. It's just very curious to me, because Wolfric has not left his house since he was hidden here. I don't know what he would know about the recent goings-on in a city far from here, but stranger things have happened. Yeah, just last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just and again, kidding. the whole orb thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I am going to give you this map and wish you all the best of luck on your journey to find Wolfric. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 